Hello everyone and welcome to another episode in my Mod Showcase series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In this episode I want to showcase some functional mods that uh, could be just the thing you've been looking for as far as parts. And so, and another functionality actually, but the main mod I'm going to be focusing on in this particular episode, there'll, there'll be multiple parts where I explore some of the other mods. The main mod that I'm going to be focusing on this time is Probotronics. Uh, I, I think that's how to pronounce it. I agree, Probotronics. Probotronics, I think, is best. And so, Probotronics is, uh, adds a certain parts that, uh, well, I'll show you the function of it uh, as we go along. I've added other mods as well. I've, of course, got MechJib as usual. But this FMRS, which is Flight Manager for, um, I think it's recoverable stages. We'll see that in action. I've got Hull Camera VDS. I've got Kerbal Attachment System. I've got uh, Infernal Robotics, Procedural Fairings, and ScanSat. So I'll be going through uh, some of these in particular in future episodes as well. But uh, let's start with Probotronics and uh, we'll see how it might work out with uh, some of the others. Okay, uh, so I, I, my vision is that these mods can work very well together, and we'll see some of that. But uh, this is a Probotronics ball probe. It's got, uh, it's of course an unmanned probe, and may, uh, perhaps the key features of it are that it has a reaction wheel of its own, it has electric charge, 200 charge, and also it has a built-in temperature and barometer sensor, so you don't have to put an extra one of those. It comes with uh, spaces for a uh, parachute, like so. Though I don't think I'll be using it for that because I'm going to be looking at one of the other mods and putting something there. And this is a heat shield, but I don't have uh, deadly re-entry, so I don't need that right now. So, yeah, we'll start with this ball probe. It is a heavy probe, it's 0.5 in mass, so it's not trivial. And what I'm actually going to do is uh, something that the mod maker probably didn't intend for me to do, which is to uh, put a winch from a Kerbal Attachment System, because I'll just give a little bit of a look into... See? There we go. Kerbal Attachment System winch, and we'll see one of Kerbal Attachment System's little features. Now, after we've got this probe, we probably want to do something with it. What should we do with it? Well, we've got this attachment thing, so maybe in a future episode what we'll do is we'll have it snag something. I don't know how to do that yet. I've never used Kerbal att Attachment System, let me be, make that clear. And I haven't actually launched a mission with Probotronics. This is, this is, some of this is new to me, and Kerbal Attachment System and Probotronics are relatively new to me. Um, I've seen videos on Kerbal Attachment System, but I have not actually played around with it. But yeah, okay, so we've got this, and let's go to Procedural Fairings, maybe. A bit, or th is this a little bit too early for Procedural Fairings? I guess, I guess it'll be alright. I don't know if we really need to, uh, there's, there's room in here for other stuff. We could, uh, for instance, sneak, um... If we wanted a supplementary battery, for instance. Oh, uh, lights are important, but let's not go there yet. Uh, so that'll be a bit too big. This battery could be snucked in there, right? And that's just another 200 charge. The probe itself has 200 charge built in. But uh, yeah, so you can do that. And for instance, add a decoupler. And we will need a decoupler because the... And something I have to remember is that uh, procedure... Oh, does this attachment not work? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, it sort of gets, does get stuck in there. Okay, let me cancel that idea. Let's get a new one out. Hmm. That didn't work quite the way I thought it would. Fair enough. Okay, so as I was saying... Uh, the procedure fairings doesn't have um, a decoupler. So what I'm going to do is gonna get one of the fairing bases and a new version of procedural fairings allows you to change the size here to all sorts of different sizes. Some of the interim sizes 
probably you're not going to use if you're just using stock parts. You probably go straight to these, yes. Not that one. But yeah, we'll stick to this. And as usual with uh, uh, not conic, I always like egg-shaped fairings. And now you can uh, change the shape, ejection power, torque. And if you wanted more radius, you can make it bulkier. But we're not going to go there. Uh, I don't think we need any extra radius. Okay, so let me set that aside for now. Because the next part I want to attach is another Probotronics thing, which is a service module. There, The service module has in it a small reaction wheel, about uh, one ton of fuel. And that's more or less it. Oh, electric charge, 100 units of electric charge. What it doesn't have is RCS. So I'm going to add an RCS tank because we're going to be doing some maneuvers. Remember, I'm going to think about trying to use this to attach to something, hopefully. I don't know how that works out just yet. But So that's the plan. Now, the thing about this service module is lets you stick parts in without them poking out and in particular what we can do is uh, get uh, solar panels so there you go now your solar panels are flush to the side of the thing and you don't have to worry about it in a sort of Kerbal way as the description here says uh, constructed from a used barrel we just smash it with a hammer so the solar panel can fit on the side so yep that's what it looks like and those who like the Kerbal similitude if you will like that. One thing you can't really do is fit enough uh, RCS ports here. Well, anyway, it's it's probably better just to have them on the RCS tank. So that's that's the thing. But anyway, that's fine. So that's a little bit of fuel. Now the probe itself, I'd say the payload is about a ton. This is let's say about another ton, another ton. So three tons. I'm planning to use one of these rockets for this stage, so I think we can stick another ton of fuel here without it being overburdened. Okay, now the next thing we need to take a look at is these Probotronics parts, and these let you reuse stage, well, in theory you get a reusable stage out of them, and I'll show you how. Uh, we just need one. I need to build the next stage off to the side here. And I'm going to put a fuel tank and one of these bits. So this is a probe with SAS decoupler and parachute compartment. Okay, so this is a decoupler as well. And it says in here it wants a Mark 16 parachute. So let's get one of those. There. Okay, well that's not the right node. You have to put it on the bottom node here if you want it to work out right. Now I'm going to stick this. Now remember it's a decoupler so we can just stick it on here. And uh, I... Uh, now you don't strictly need to do this but I'm going to put a remote guidance unit on because I want that to be a controllable stage. Okay, so now we have a new stage. I'm going to say the top part is about 5 tons, I'm just estimating. And now we're starting a new stage and I'm going to fill it up with fuel. Ooh. I'm going to call this another 12 tons. And that should be about the limit of one of uh, these engines. 12 plus uh, 5, 17 and then the engine weight itself. Alright, so another Probotronics part that I want to take a look at is this one. This is a little adapter because, you know, with uh, lander legs, you can't put one of these parts on because they can't stretch far enough, right? So let's say without this, we go like this, and we have it like this. So if we want to put some of the lander legs on, these definitely wouldn't work. Let's see. Let's get them as low as possible. No, and that's glitchy. 
Okay, extend. No, not at all. Now, these might work. If we do it like this. But just barely, and you, you've got the suspension to think about. So this could work, but it's probably better just to have a little skirt like this. And I hope uh, the Probotronics modder makes a 2.5 meter one. That would be great. So, so that we can recover larger stages. And so I'm thinking of sort of a SpaceX-ish kind of thing. I don't think that's what it was for. It was probably for um, doing landers on different planets. But I'm thinking differently. Now, so we have this skirt and clearly the landing struts now have plenty of clearance. So that's good. But the, our, our elegant design is not so elegant anymore and we need to clean up the lines here. So I think what we need is some fins. Right? I think that's a little bit better. I don't think this is enough to get us into space right now. So we need some sort of booster. And if we're going to have a booster, why don't we grab another one of these? Not, not like this though. I don't need the control unit. But let's still make it reusable. And remember this is a decoupler, so that's fine. And we are going to add a booster. Actually, I don't think I've ever used this one. How big is it? No, oh, that's a bit... Well, you know what? It's not that powerful. And let's go a little bit eccentric with this. This is tall. Hmm. Do you suppose this will work out? What's the, what's the empty mass of this? Uh, three tons. I don't think the one little parachute will be able to deal with three tons, honestly. Of course, we could close our eyes and pretend, but... Let's give it a little bit more help here, just to be honest about things. Uh, uh, this booster is not made very well. It doesn't allow these... Who made this booster that we can't... So now the tanks have no problem, but this booster was not designed for this properly. Oh well, I'm going to have to put it uh, away from the intended location. And I think we also need canards here to make the thing look proper. I mean, not that it's going to look proper, it's a little bit weird, but thankfully we do not have Ferromero space installed. So, this is a valid rocket, I think. Now, we need to fix staging, though. We'll have this rocket fire. Got this decoupler here. That parachute and probably the one in there is here, hopefully. Yeah. Okay, those parachutes go. That goes up, 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 up and we'll have you know what let's not have the parachute deploy exactly at the same time uh, if I could right and that allow our little flight manager thing to help out so we can regain control over this stage uh, right I want the fairings separate stage okay so here's the thing, isn't it? Let's have some launch clamps. Uh, okay, two is fine. Okay, let's be honest about this. Let's call this test. I'm gonna action group the solar panels. Now you'll see here, this is called fuse box. Is currently telling me that my that my uh, electric charge will run out in 56 seconds because of the energy drain and the fact that the solar panels can't provide more than 12. Now it's got uh, we've got all these little features though, and what if okay so the probe isn't the problem, miscellaneous isn't the problem, clamps. I think it's just the winch, and I don't think it's going to cause an energy drain 
unless it's being used. We'll see. I think, uh, I mean, the, I think the main drain is actually the winch, and it's assuming that I'm going to be using it constantly. We'll see if that's what it is or not. Alright, so here's our first rocket with a lot of Probatronics parts built in, and we'll see how it works. Let's take it out to launch pad. Okay, so this looks like almost like a proper sounding rocket, and without the winch activated, it looks like this is our situation on the fuse box, or it is fuse box. Um, I've got FMRS armed, which means it's going to be paying attention to the stage's ID couple. That's what uh, having it armed means. Throttle is up, SAS is on, and let's give this a go. Right now, of course, uh, we're not generating any power. The power we were getting was from the launch clamps, give a little bit of electric charge. The SRB does not provide electric charge and our solar panels aren't out. So we are draining a little bit of electricity here and you can see that we will be out of electricity in 40 minutes. If you're gonna build good probes and Probotronics apparently is for that sort of thing. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. We've got uh, aerodynamic iffiness here. Um, tell you what, SAS, stop. Sometimes it's SAS not knowing how to handle things. So even if you're your vehicle is a good, sensible thing like this. Um, it doesn't know what to do with it. Okay. There we go. Probe separated and I'll use SAS now. I think it'll handle this. And I'll start my gravity turn. So you can see it uh, registered that stage 7, but I'm not going to pay too much attention to that because Hopefully, I mean, we saw the parachutes open, and hopefully it's all right. It certainly had enough par- ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. It certainly had enough parachutes to uh, deal with itself, so... To worry. Did I, didn't I put a gimbling engine on this? Yeah, it is the gimbling one, so I'm surprised. It's having trouble. Now we're going to save a little bit of the fuel in this stage. We obviously won't be able to land it anywhere because, well, we don't have any land. We could try the island runway, but we're a little bit far away from that. Sometime in the future though, and if you want to try out these probatronic parts, maybe you would want to have your uh, lower stage try and make a landing at the island runway. That'd be sort of cool. Maybe on a subsequent launch we'll try that out. I wonder... I haven't actually... well, obviously I haven't tried it. I wonder what heading I should go in to really get it there. Okay, I think we're a little bit better now. Looks like we'd go past, but maybe I should just rebalance the stage stages then. So yeah, the way I figure it, these mods will work very well together as far as Flight Manager... Let me get the acronym right. Uh, flight Manager for Reusable Stages. I mean, I think uh, that the idea of having these stages like this, probably we want to have Flight Manager for Reusable Stages. Okay, come on. So you see it registered that other stage and it sort of got it uh, in the docket there. But we're going to continue with this part of it. And I'm going to get this into orbit. On the way, let's take a look at this winch. Okay, uh, let's say I say extend. 
You can hear a sort of electronic whirring sound. Hmm. Okay, maybe it's just too low in the atmosphere. It has a GUI of its own, so this is the winch's control here. Let's hold on to that. Maybe I'll wait until we get a little bit higher. Oh, of course you can shrink this, but unfortunately this is uh, either open or closed. Uh, everything can be added to uh, to here. So Infernal Robotics I've got here. Well, except I guess this uh, curl attachment system isn't integrated with the with the toolbar. Let's move the toolbar to a nicer location. Surely we've got an apoapsis that's good? Yes. Alright, let me just cut power here. Now, when we're not accelerating, maybe the winch will work properly. Uh, so let's say extend. Okay. Oh, there we go. Let me just sort of leave it hanging. You can see it's being affected by gravity here. Perhaps, so we can retract it, just let it automatically retract. There are two numbers here. This is the length and this is the strain. So if you... Uh, Right now it says cable is under strain, and that's because we're still not in orbit and therefore not in free fall. It is straining our battery a bit, so let's say we extend solar panels. Okay, there we go. Electricity generation going well. So again, I haven't played around with curl attachment system, but uh, presumably you can... It's it's sort of like a much more advanced claw. I'm hoping that that's what we're talking about here. But I think uh, for the winch you need a target, I think. You can also have a magnet, electromagnet, that uh, will just attach things. And I think there is a claw-like implement. We'll, we'll, take the, uh, we'll take a look at all that in subsequent episodes. Not in this one. Let's just make orbit right now. That's good enough. I don't need to keep this thing up. So, now that we're in orbit, let's see how this winch works. Maybe I've got it wrong, then it'll just go down, or will it uh, extends, extend straight out, or what will happen? I don't know. Let's see before it gets too dark. Uh, it's sort of off to the side this time. Turn connected port to the right. Doesn't seem to do anything right now. This is a mod that I would have to practice with, I think. Let me turn around so I get some sunlight on this. So it sort of swings around like that. Not unreasonable for a winch. Might make it a little bit tricky to use though. Um, hmm. 
What if we use RCS to back away? Will it extend straight out? Not really. But maybe if it uh, detects the other end of it, maybe it'll sort of magnetize like the docking ports do. Okay, that's all theoretical. But we've got a probe here. And you can see that the probe can log temperature, though that's useless because I'm in sandbox mode, and log pressure, but that's useless most of the time anyway. And it can transmit data, so it's got uh, the antenna for that. So all built in, but it is heavy, so 0.5 tons. And we've used a lot of fuel to get it up here. But let us uh, take a look at what this flight manager helps us to do and see about that stage that we separated. Okay, so here we are at the moment of separation. And in fact, uh, if we take a look at the map, we don't have the other mission here. So we've li literally reverted. But what we're going to do is we're going to do whatever we want to do as far as recovering this and then we have the option to jump back to the main mission. So let's do that. Uh, so we've separated from the other mission. I should be able to control this, yes? Okay. Oh, we're sort of stuck, aren't we? Why are we stuck? Oh no, there we go. Alright. Good, good. And I'm going to do if I can do it without smashing into the other part quick retro burn okay gotta pretend that we're going to try and land this properly we don't have too much reaction control but we do have aerodynamic control What sort of mass do we have on this? Five tons, so we need to burn some stuff off if this tiny little parachute is going to help us at all. Okay, I don't want to decouple anything. Let's change this around a bit. Okay, I'm going to deploy parachute. Take SAS off. And start burning to decelerate. And also this will help uh, get rid of some of our extra fuel since that's mass that we don't need. Now, of course, uh, SpaceX with Falcon 9 doesn't use a parachute. They just uh, let it drop and then hover at the bottom. But I'm going to let the parachute deploy, and then I'm going to have this thing hover above the surface, see how long it can do that, and then we'll, uh, we'll end it. Okay, so we've got a parachute deployment, and this will be a little bit too fast for this particular thing, but it's carrying an extra ton. So let's see about dumping that fuel. So we're now essentially hovering, and we've probably lost the parachute. Yes, we have. Oh, 
Let's have SAS on, otherwise this is going to be tough. Now, of course, the SpaceX one would fire only at the last minute, not, uh, not like this. Okay, not the best thing I've ever done. Alright, uh, let's jump back to the main mission, though. So, important to note, despite the complete loss of our other mission, tragic loss, we were able to jump back to this mission just fine and it is in orbit. So, if you want to try and recover one of your stages, you can do that. Flight Manager reco for recoverable stages works just fine, except uh, you actually have to be able to recover your stages. That would be a thing. And so you can simulate that if you'd like, and still retain the ability to return to your mission at hand. All right, I'm going to uh, retract the winch. And let's go back to the VAB and see what other parts are in the Probotronic pack. There's one other one I want to take a look at before we leave. But I think, uh, I think you get the idea. But uh, let's take a look at that one. Okay, so the one part I wanted to look at that comes with Probotronics is this ATV Mark I. Now, we've all had the thing where we want to send fuel up to orbit. But we don't really have... We don't really have a very good, a very photogenic way of doing that so far. But then there's this ATV, Automatic Transport Vehicle. And this thing has a reaction wheel built in. Oh, oh come on. Hey. Uh, there we go. Electric Charge. It's got uh, liquid fuel, mop balance, oxidizer. It's got about the size of one of these tanks. Uh, not that tank. This tank. So that, that much fuel. It is heavy, it's uh, 12 tons, one of these tanks is 9, but it's also got the mom propellant, and it's also got xenon gas, so that you can have it push itself to wherever it needs to go. So it's got all of this stuff in, in there, and so you could just uh, slap on one of your favorite little ion propulsion engines, though that might not be... But it's got all sorts of other fuels, so if you want to pack something else, that's fine too. Now, we probably want a docking port up front. I don't think it has one of those. So, how about... Mm, oh, that's not too bad, actually. But clearly, this should be something in a fairing. We're going to have reaction control. Let's see what the center mass is on this. Okay, so we'll put, it, put them around there. Uh, maybe like this. And since I am an impatient person, one of those guys... Well, let's, let's be reasonable. We really only need something like that. Okay, and once again, I think this works well with procedural fairings and let's go to the next size up with the tiny little engine being what's holding things up I just feel a little bit better adding struts even if it's not strictly necessary right and then we need we just need to work on our other stages so we're carrying 12 tons well 13 tons of payload up we probably, we've got electric charge on, but we probably need some sort of, uh, I don't know, these two look like solar panels, but I don't think they are. D does it uh, have a rechargeability? Let's say, well it just says requires, 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 so. Oh, it can transmit data too, it's got a data transmitter, that's ne neat. Okay, so we don't have to put any of that sort of thing on, but maybe we do need uh, solar panels. Let's not cover up the logo. Alright, so that's fine. And we need to build a launcher for it. 12 tons. Probably means with this we will need a poodle. And now let's get... Oh, I guess we should uh, slip in the reaction wheel there. 
probably don't need the reaction wheel. But just feel a little bit better about... Oops, not what I wanted to do. Not a caps lock, shift. No. I'm having a lot of clicking issues today. So yeah, but uh, that we're not done yet. Because we do have larger versions of this stuff. So let's do the thing that I did before which is build it off this oh I forgot I have mech jib here we could uh, just use that to figure out the delta V so getting the probotronic thing here it says it wants one mark 16 XL so mark 16 XL I think probably need more than that but we'll see oh no 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 Let's just get this. Oh, we don't need a decoupler if we've got this. Right. Got that. Get rid of this. Oh. Get rid of this. And so let's let's go to Mech Jeb, actually. Let's get one of them on. Let's work on the base stage, which let's just not mince words. We want something huge. And that that's why I think the one parachute is probably not sufficient. Right. Now we we could go a little bit weaker on this. We could go with a skipper if it would ever get to the right stage. Uh, that's a little well. We could do this. We could go boosters. Uh, let, let's try and make it as reusable as possible. This stage is probably got to be left in orbit. We we could slap on a controller and deorbit it and at least let it burn up in the atmosphere. But uh, here we don't have enough Delta V just yet. We're a little bit low on the power. But that'll have to do. Yeah, that'll have to do. Um... So we need boosters. Let's just go for the crazy stuff. Um, God, this thing really doesn't want to stage properly here. Uh, that's actually too much. And let's put some... I guess we'll run the main engine a little bit, though I guess we don't really need to do it like that. The, that that's fine. That's fine. Or we could just idle it. That's, that's good too. Okay, and... Parachutes for the boosters. Okay. That's pretty tight. We'll try it out anyway. Now, I want to get our first taste of one of the other mods I like and that I've built into here. And that is Hull Camera VDS. And we're going to put a little camera here, like so. And we'll play around with this much more in subsequent episodes. But I'm going to activate the camera with uh, Action Group 1. You could put cameras on anything, including the launch clamps, but I'm not going to do that for this one. This time we're going to go very traditional about it. Okay. Ah, good. Delta V is looking a little bit better with that. So here we are. That looks fine. Let's try this out with the hull camera and everything. I won't name it, but we can just go for it. Okay, so here we are, and I'm going to idle the main engine. We don't need its full power. Let's say around there will be fine. And SAS is on. Uh, yep, 
And we'll go to the the onboard camera in a little bit. Uh, let's take a look at it. That that's how it looks. Okay, let's light. Ooh. There you go. Ah, okay, fine. We're losing a little bit of steam here, but that's uh, that's was calculated into the whole thing. So, not ideal, but not a problem. We can see FMRS didn't really register all of that, all of those other stages. Now when you're in the camera view like this, I highly recommend using backspace to get out of it, because otherwise there could be other complications. If you switch to some of the other AeroCam views, getting back to the main view can be tricky sometimes. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why that is, but just something I've noted. Okay. Hmm, having control issues. Whoa, real control issues. Whoa. Hmm, I don't know what went wrong there. Well, let me separate. So that's off, and you can see it registers that one, but I'm not in a very good orientation to do anything right now. Whoa, everything's spinning. Okay. Well, the pool engine has a lot of... Uh, controllability but we've lost a lot of speed now and I'm still having trouble controlling this thing I think I need more I mean because it's a 12 ton, ton, uh, 12 ton payload probably need a little bit more torque and reaction power oh uh, I've got RCS ah, it's still wiggling a lot what's up I think it's just top heavy I need a more powerful launcher. This was too weak a launcher for this uh, payload. I should have gone with the mainsail after all. Okay, well, uh, I'm not going to see this get destroyed, but I mean, yeah, I uh, probably needed a much more powerful launcher for this payload. Even though the Delta V was alright, uh, where it was being delivered wasn't good enough. But, hey, let's uh, skip to this. And we can see here that the parachute hasn't deployed yet. So why don't we just uh, go with that. Uh, hello. Oh right, I, I don't have uh, control unit on here. 
So you'll have to remember if you're going to jump to uh, a recoverable stage to have a control unit on. Because obviously if the parachute had deployed I wouldn't need to control it. But the parachute hasn't deployed. So I actually did need to control it. Is it even there? Oh maybe has it deployed? Has it gone away? Well, it looks like it's deployed and it's not uh, it's not there anymore. Uh, well, I need to play around with more of these to figure out exactly what's going on sometimes. Jump to separations. Interestingly, this one, it does get rid of the top stage. Not too sure why the top stage was still around when I did it the last time with the 1.25 meter parts, but this time the top stage disappeared. Anyway, but uh, we could just revert to launch. So I think I'll I'll leave it at that for this episode. Next time we're going to have a little bit more fun with the hull cameras, which are also from Magic Smoke Industries, and and I'll probably also be doing Infernal Robotics. So both of those are in this pack, and we'll continue to use the Probotronics parts just so I can get some more practice with them. But uh, yeah, so our, my main focus though will be with the Hull Camera and Magic Smoke Industries' uh, Infernal Robotics pack. So uh, look forward to that. Uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any other comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.